In this lesson, we'll take a look at a couple of pseudo techniques that look like real tosujis, except they don't really work. They look like something you might have seen in a Go book, but it's a tiny bit different. So this is a game played by two beginner Q players. It's White's turn, and White decides to cut quite reasonably. Atari. White extends. And now Black really wants to try and capture these two white stones. So Black finds an astonishing Tsuji. Black attaches. It seems like it could work, but it doesn't. White is moving out, and White has three liberties. So this move is like throwing yourself in front of a moving train, as in it's highly dangerous and it can hardly lead to a good result. Of course, now White can uh, push in any direction. Black will probably have to save this stone and then push here. And even if Black now makes a good shape, it feels like Black has too many weaknesses. For example, White can push inside, cut, and it feels like Black is going to collapse. So if you're planning to make a big Tsuji like this one, I suggest that before you do, you, you read one move ahead. You ask yourself, do I see how this move captures White? Do I see how it works? And if the answer is I'm not sure or I don't see that, then maybe you should consider a more conservative option. For example, in this position, Black shouldn't worry about this cut. If White cuts here, Black will capture this stone in a ladder. So the only thing that Black should worry about in this position is this cutting point. Right now, Black should probably protect it with something like this. This is a shape move, and now White will have to escape into the center. This feels very nice for Black. And now let's see another example. In this game, Black is doing a pretty good job. Black made some big territory on this side, and this white group is in danger. Right now it's White's turn, and White takes care of these stones first. Black immediately counters this with a Tesuji. It looks like a net. It feels like a net, but let me show you what a net looks like. It's this move right here. This white group only has two liberties left, which means that this black stone captures it efficiently. This is a net. Now let's go back to the game position. This white group has too many extra liberties. So of course white can play here, or white can push and cut. And there's no way for black to capture these white stones. Playing this kind of net feels like going hunting with a rifle that is broken, or that simply isn't loaded. When you're out there and there's a bear jumping at you, it's already too late. Before you go into the wild, you have to make sure that your rifle is all set and ready to go. So in this position, Black should realize that his rifle, or his net, isn't really working properly just yet. So there's no reason to play here right now. Instead, Black, Black could think about defending his territory like this. Or maybe trying to attack these stones in the middle by playing here, for example. And Black could always come back to attacking these stones in the future. This is the same game continued, and Black is still doing good. Black lost this corner, but Black is now chasing these white stones into his moyo. White is trying to escape, and Black tries to capture them using the same Tesuji. And once again, White has too many liberties for this Tesuji to work. I'm not saying that this move necessarily fails and loses the game. Black can probably still capture White, but now White gets more chances to resist. White will push, push again, and now Atari. Right now, Black can probably still connect here, let White capture the stone, and this is going to be a false eye. But Black connects here, White plays this double Atari, and now it really looks like White is safe. But all of this really wasn't necessary. But look at this position once again. White is trying to escape, but where exactly? There are Black stones all around. So even if Black doesn't make any surrounding moves, it's going to be very difficult for White to live here. And if Black simply takes care of his weaknesses, for example, connect here, now White will have to live somewhere in the middle, being surrounded by all of those Black Stones. And that's going to be impossible. White will die. My advice for this kind of situation is very simple. Try to read one or two moves ahead. And if you can't see how the Suji works, it probably means that it doesn't. So don't take that broken rifle with you. Make sure it's fixed and loaded. And while it's not, just play a safer and more peaceful move and you will probably avoid all the danger. And now let's practice. By the way, 
You can also watch these lessons on our platform, gomagic.org. Except there, you'll watch them with interactive quizzes right within the lessons and practical exercises right after them. And if you enjoy watching these Go videos and you don't want to miss others like this one, go smash that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and this is Go Magic. <laughs>